Hi everyone, I'm Claudio Gomes. In this video, we'll cover our work in applying model-based testing to test uh, functional mock-up units. We'll start with a bit of background um, so that you get a better understanding of why we're doing this work. Co-simulation is a technique to combine simulators in order to approximate the ideal solution of a coupled system. To illustrate, suppose I'm trying to understand the behavior of an automated ground vehicle that you see here on the right. The system is comprised of three important uh, components, the, the environment, the controller, and the body. Each of these is best modeled using a dedicated tool, so the co-simulation is there to connect these different tools and compute the overall behavior. Since there are different tools involved in this process, uh, it's crucial that they uh, implement the same interface to, in, to enable co-simulation. So this is where the FMI standard comes in. Uh, a simulator implementing the FMI standard is called a functional mock-up unit, or an FMU. Now, I'm not going to go over the details of the standard here, but uh, there are a few important functions that each tool must implement. Setting an input, um, get an output and do a step. These functions implement in every tool, a master algorithm knows, um, and the master algorithm knowing how the tools have to be connected, uh, then it will use these functions to communicate with each tool and um, invoke the get, set, and do step operations. Now, why did we decide to go into model-based testing FMUs? Because be dealing with FMUs can be a pain. In fact, in earlier work, we conducted interviews with, uh, with co-simulation practitioners and we found out that there are many outstanding barriers to the adoption of FMI. Uh, so these are, these are just some of the top ones. As you can see, most are related to poor quality of FMUs, documentation, lack of transparency, and so on. We thought, why are these available tools, uh, why are the available tools not enough um, to satisfy these, uh, to overcome these barriers. Because if you look at, the, at those in more detail, you'll find that, for, for instance, the FMU compliance checker tests an FMU by running a co-simulation with it, feeding it some predefined inputs. And this is good, but this is a happy day scenario. In practice, the FMUs are going to be used in wild ways. We need to understand better how the FMU behaves in all possible ways uh, we can use it. Um, this also clarifies this approach of trying all possible ways would also clarify which features are support are not supported by the FMU. So this is the gap we tried to fill. The other tools do a good job at uh, validating the FMU and importing um, and testing importing tools, but we felt that developing a, a flexible and an extensive tool to do extensive testing uh, is is a way to improve things. So. How does this tool that we develop work? Well, it uses a model that um, a model of what the set of allowed uh, FMU behaviors is. So it, then it generates and executes test scenarios based on that. So see here on the left, you see a state machine representing a set of allowed operations on an FMU. Note that this state machine is non-deterministic, so uh, any at any state I can pick uh, many possible edges to move to the next state. Each edge is an operation to be carried out on the FMU. So a test is simply a walk, a particular walk from start to finish on the state machine, as you see here in red. So our tool uses an existing model-based testing tool called ModBat, and our main contribution is in the language that is used to represent these test scenarios, so the, the, the thing you see here in yellow. So our approach is illustrated um, here on the right. We take an FMU, we use a set of descriptions of behaviors of this FMU specified in our language. We merge those by some techniques uh, we developed into an input that ModBat can understand, and then we, we let ModBat do the testing. We, of course, define what the edges mean, ModBat runs our code. So this is an example of what our edges mean, uh, of what each edge corresponds to. For instance, the step operation involves non-deterministically um, 
losing a step size, then asking the FMU to do a step, and then checking that the FMU is stepped successfully. So a successful test is one where no errors executing these operations or assertion violations or exceptions have occurred. It's worth noting that at this point, that the distributed co-simulation protocol development people have also adopted a mall-based testing approach to improve the conformance of the standard. So we are not alone in the in the in the how we we go went about this, solving this problem. So when trying to develop a model for describing an FMU, we realized that we need a more efficient way to describe the allowed operations. For instance, there are many edges between the same source and the same target. So we decided to implement some synthetic sugar on top of our language that allows us to expand this and, and develop and reduce the effort in describing these. Many edges are shared by many source states, so our language allows us to describe uh, core states. We wanted some uh, operations to be repeated a maximum number of times. So we developed a bounded repetition operator. See, the, the expansion of this operator is not so trivial. Finally, we wanted a way to have a modular specification so that we could spread it across multiple files. Uh, it works by matching names of the states uh, and then merging the edges. So using these operators, we uh, developed a large specification of an FMU uh, that was based on the state machine shown in, in, the, in the FMA standard. To get the FMUs, we went to the FMU cross-check repository that is the only repository we know of that has more than 160 FMUs. This is, um, this is a simplified version of the model that we use to run the experiments. In practice, it is a little bit larger. Some of these operations are non-deterministic. The ones highlighted in red, um, these will pick, for example, different values or uh, variables. We configured modbat to run with uh, to run a thousand tests on each FMU, and the self loops are limited up to ten executions. These are the plot results overall from about 169 FMUs. We 77 passed all tests, 55 failed at least one test. Since we had a very large number of failures, remember we're running a thousand tests per FMU, um, we had to bundle them together into equivalence classes. These equivalence classes are considered equivalent, two tests are considered equivalent if they occurred at the, at the same operation, the same edge on the instance of the same FMU. So we ended up with about 100 failures that we could analyze manually and individually. So we looked at the logs and errors and so on. And these are the most common failures we found. Uh, one, if a mu does not recognize a value reference um, to a variable that is declared in its model description, this is bad. Another common failure is that variables cannot be queried after terminating a co-stimulation. Uh, this is allowed by the standard. Same thing for the get real status operation. Um, for during a co-simulation, we try to change a variable that could be changed to a, to a tunable parameter, but the FMU refused, refused to do so. Um, we found uh, some failures with URI formats, and these are particularly nasty because we, we can't even instantiate the FMU. Six, we will discuss this failure later. It has to do with feed-through. Uh, seven, many FMUs did not allow the reset operation to be invoked which is mandatory in the standard. Um, eight, some instances are not isolated from others, so one failure in one instance propagates, causes other instances to fail, which is a problem if you're running co-simulations with multiple instances of the same FMU. We even saw that some uh, FMUs reject the values of variables, even though those values, will, those values were picked to be within the intervals declared by the FMU. Now, there are some limitations of this uh, study. Um, these grim results are probably outdated by now because the FMUs are constantly being uh, updated. 
Uh, we picked a large number of tests in order to cover, so that, that the value of a thousand, it is picked in order to cover about 95% of all the ways you can invoke the FMU operations. We are not interested in running all cold simulations till the end. We have the FMU checker for that. Uh, we made a series of assumptions on the values um, that we need to set the variables with. And this can cause some problems. And indeed, uh, it did cause some problems, but those it only caused uh, about uh, 14 out of uh, almost 15,000 tests. So this is less than 1%, 0.1% of the tests failed because of these assumptions. Um, finally, we did not consider um, synchronous operations. What other things we've, have we learned from uh, this work? Well, some FMUs makes numerical parameters with model parameters. For example, internal solver being used or internal step size being used, and these need to be better documented. Other FMUs should disclose what constraints they have on variables because co-simulations may crash due to an FMU restra uh, restra rejecting a variable, a value of a variable, and it's, it's hard to know why, even from the logs. Different FMUs make different interpretations of whether feed-through is supported in the standard. So feed-through means that we can change an output by sending a different input without a two-step in between. It's very, it's actually very important for physical couplings. As we've shown in past work, the ability to use feed-through can turn a, a bad co-simulation like this one into a good co-simulation like this one. So since we can devise a test to check whether the FMU implements feed-through, uh, we did exactly that, and we found that the majority of the FMUs implement uh, feed-through. Do not implement feed-through, sorry. While talking with the FMI steering committee, uh, it became clear that uh, a feed-through should not be supported in FMI 2.01, but this is in our opinion, a, a severe limitation of, of um, for some co-simulation scenarios, as, we, as we've showed. So, to summarize, we developed a tool and a language to describe FMU testing scenarios. It sits on top of another model-based testing tool called ModBat. Our tool can run with any FMU testing, any FMU testing scenario, as long as it can be described in our language. So it's very flexible. We then uh, created a representation of the FMI state machine and set out to test real FMUs from the FMI cross-check repository. Um, we hope that the most common failures and the lessons learned that we described here will make the next iterations of these FMUs better and the adoption of FMI standards better. Thank you.